Right, let's quickly summarize this. A job family group is a collection of job families. Okay, a job family is a grouping of job profiles. Okay, and what is the job profile? A job file describes the basic job characteristics and conditions of employment, such as the required skills, training, work experience, etc. And a job profile can be assigned to one or more job families. A job family can be assigned to only one job family group. So let's take a look at this graphic where you see there are multiple individual positions in jobs. Now remember when we were creating our position yesterday. We also used a job profile, that of a training manager. And then we use a stop of a training manager when we set the high chance in our job management organization. So what happens is using the same job profile. We may hire multiple people. We may create multiple positions based on the same job. I think positions can be created using the same job profile. So here we were talking about the individual positions and jobs. So using the same job profile, we may create multiple positions or jobs right. And then we can. So you see here Jane, Joes, Juan, and James. They have different positions or jobs, but all based on the same job profile, that is, legal administrative assistant. Right, and we may have multiple job profiles for administrative assistants, like administrative assistant, senior administrative assistant, legal administrative assistant, and so on. And then we can group them all together into a job family called administrative assistants, and then administrative assistants can be part of the job family group called administrative workers. Right, this is just a depiction. This is just an example. We may use something like this to group our job profiles. Right. So let's create a job profile in Workday. Right, we were using something like Training Manager, but we did not create one for ourselves. Let's, let's create one. Job profile is. I mean, it has a lot of possibilities. We will be able to put in a lot of information in a job profile. So, but then, while I am proxying and going to that screen, let me tell you this. We recently did a finance implementation for a large insurance customer, so they were just doing workday finance. Okay, they did not want to do work date. See him. So then what happened? But still, even if they are doing finance, they have to bring in some people. They have to hire some people. So they set up their HCM part at the bare minimum. They just created the supervisory organization structures. They created job profiles and they just hired those workers in those job profiles. They only mentioned the absolute bare minimum of the configurations right. So that is also possible for customers. But then we again, on the other hand, we implemented a HCM for a customer and they put in a lot of details in the job profile, like they made it absolutely like very, very detail oriented. So I mean it can be on either end of the spectrum. You can put in minimum details in the job profile to get started or you can put in a lot of information and make it as close to reality as possible. So it's up to the organization to decide how much detail they want to put in. So to create a job profile. The task is create job profile. Okay, create job profile. And in that you give an effective date, okay, for I mean from what date you want to create this job profile? Let me give today's date as the effective date 15th and then you start putting in details. So if I scroll down, if I scroll down, 
you see that only the job profile name is the mandatory field. Do you see anything else as mandatory? I'll slowly scroll down. Nothing else right. Nothing else is mandatory, so you just need to fill in the job profile name and you are done. That is the basic minimum. Okay, so let's give it a job profile name. Let's call it as. What shall we call it? Chief Executive Officer Right. Let's just call it Chief Executive. Officer. Okay, this is our first job profile, okay. Now the job code. Do you want to have a job code? If you already have a job code. Maybe you are using some other system and there it's typical to use a job code. Yes, if you want, if you have that job code, you fill it up already. If you do not have a job code, if you want Workday to create one for you, just say, include job code in the name. Right. Include job code in the name. Then what it will do? It will create a job code for you, and it will include it as part of the name as well. Okay if you, but if you do not want to include it as part of the name, just leave it blank, work. They will create a job code for you anyway. Right, but still, let's have include job code as part of the name. Now do you want to restrict this job profile to any specific country, like OK? The CEO is only we will hire the CEO only between United States. OK, and UK, so I will not open this. Job profile in any other country, only these two countries. I will be able to hire this. I mean this job profile. This will be only accessible to these two countries, US and UK. Okay, nothing else. If you do not want to restrict it when to any country, leave it blank. Write management level. What will be the management level? Let's choose from our list. So we see one is the chief executive officer right. We can choose this one. So chief executive officer is our management level. And if you have a job family already, if you want, if you have created job families already, then you can put this particular job profile into their job family right. But we are not going to put it there. We have not created our job family yet, so we will leave it as black job category. So job, family, job, category can be direct labor or indirect labor. But here people have renamed that direct labor to indirect and of lap or you are anyway. So direct labor versus indirect labor. Do you know what is the direct labor versus what is an indirect labor? Direct labor means that you are straight away able to hire. Account for the cost. Right, like let's say, somebody is a production line worker. Okay, somebody is working in the factory. So you know that, okay, that this person's daily output has to be, let's say, 100 pence. One hundred pence. It is directly measurable, one hundred pence. So you pay this worker the wages based on one hundred pence right. This is absolutely direct labor. You can straight away quantify how much work this person is doing. But now think about your IT architect, or maybe your recruiter, maybe your benefits partner. 
Is it possible to direct, directly quantify how much work they are doing? Not possible, right. We have to come up with other forms like, okay. Are they adding any value to the organization? Are they adding to any efficiency, and so on, but it is not possible to directly measure how much work they are doing on a daily basis, right, and they are not directly earning revenue for the organization. Mostly, they are support functions. For example, even the CEO is a support function. Right, the management, the management team, your supervisors, your managers. They are all part of support functions. They are not direct labor. Your your manufacturing work level workers are direct labor. Maybe your sales are direct labor. They are directly earning their revenue for the organization, but all the support functions HR at the management staff. They are all indirect labor.